Welcome to the Intern Whisperer Live, the show all about internships and how to excel and do well. This is Abby. This is Matt. This is Isabella. Reminder to our listeners, you can call us live on the air. The phone number is 407-582-2906. And you can also chat with us online through the Intern Pursuits Facebook Live chat. All right. Coming up this episode of the Intern Whisperer Live, we have our Wild Card Wednesday topic, Communicating with multi-generational workers. So how do people find us? You can find Intern Pursuit on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You can find our Intern Pursuit, The Game, on Facebook and Twitter. And you can listen to us live on MixLR.com forward slash Valencia College Radio and follow Intern Whisper. Whisper, whisper. All right, you can watch <laughs> us live on <laughs> 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 oh, so I was glad actually, I, made you. I thought it was an echo. I looked at the speakers. I was like, what is that? <laughs> you can watch us live on Facebook and you can call us live on the air. 407 582 2906. And you can chat with us online through our live Intern Pursuits Facebook chat. All right. We're going to thank our first patron of the night, RB Advisory. RB Advisory offers cybersecurity services to businesses worldwide. They are security specialists for cloud, computer, network, and compliance issues. RB Advisory addresses active threats to organizations, patching network vulnerabilities, and preventing future attacks to your business and information. Their website is rbadvisoryllc.com. Thank you, RB Advisory, for being a patron of the Intern Whisperer Live. up there i'm sorry all right so (laughs) i learned from last week matt and i immediately connected the phone to the live show and i turned the volume down so we didn't have that little echoing thing going oh yeah so now i can respond and you can see that i've already it says that i've joined the show but there's my character or no that's not my character that's breezy from the intern pursuit game so says hello oh that is pretty cool. Yeah, so two two for one there. All right, so our spotlight updates. Um, we have, I was on the um, SCORE radio program last week, and SCORE is Senior Core of Retired Executives. I was their radio guest, and it was pre-recorded on Thursday, but it was played Saturday on an AM and FM station, and I had three people that contacted me after that show played. So are they the retired executives? Because obviously you're not. No, I'm not, but they are. And so they come in and they help people write business plans. They give whatever their expertise is, they're there to share that. Um, But the other thing I was going to share is that from that show, it is also a podcast. So we're going to have that backlink um, going out on our social social channels so that people can actually listen into it. Now, vote for Intern Pursuit on FedEx Small Business Grant. It is coming to the end, so I've been voting daily, and I don't know who else is voting, but you can go to FedEx Small Business Grant. We also have the link, and it will be in the show notes. It's being promoted on our social feeds. And people can vote for Intern Pursuit. The prize is $50,000. Wow. Equity yeah. free. Yeah. Love to have that. <laughs> um, stu- yeah, for the show. For the show. For everything. Or just, just to be in able general. To, well, yeah, but no, it's, it's for marketing, really. Yeah. Um, students, we would love to have you join our startup team and be an Intern Pursuit student influencer, a brand ambassador. So you can go to internpursuit.tech forward slash careers and go to those job descriptions. So I'm still interviewing people um, from going to Rollins and UCF. Great turnout there. Um, And then we're still taking some employers to be part of our early adopter program. So they get gifted with some extra months on top of their 12-month membership. All right, so our wild card conversation topic is communicating with multi-generational workers. And the reason why I chose that one is because this past Saturday I was at Rollins College. Right. The student chapter, SHRM, which is Society of Human Resource Management, I was one of the speakers, and that's what I presented to the group on. Um, And it was a really great turnout, so I thought it was timely since this is the first time in, I think, any time we've had five generations in the workforce, 
it's uh, really important to know the value of how we can communicate. Remember, it's mm -hmm. not all about us. Right. It's about communicating with others. So we're going to go ahead and kick that off with traditionalists and silent. They were born before 1945, and they lived through the Great Depression and World War II. That's probably great-grandparents or grandparents for some people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know. They're, they're still alive. Um, they saw the rapid migration from the farm to the city. They value the guidance of experts. They don't question authority. And they have an extremely strong work ethic. Yes. My so great-grandmother is still alive. My grandma. And I can yeah. attest to that as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you totally know. They would hold the newspaper in their hand, mm -hmm. and they liked to read the newspaper yep. Yep. because it was delivered to their door. So there was no computers, obviously, then. Yep. Right? So they, they do that. They also would handwrite letters yeah. to yeah. people, not typing them. It's a lost. Yes. And phones were just like what we were doing earlier in the <laughs> studio for our listeners. We have a landline in here, and it was, is it okay to share? Yeah, go okay. ahead. So um, the guys, we were trying to make a, a phone call to Rollins College Library, and the guys with me, you know, they're both going, what do we do? <laughs> what are we supposed to do? What is this device? I don't yeah, know. Like, it doesn't have I a touch used, screen. I hadn't used a landline. In yeah. How do you hang up on it? How do you <laughs> dial it? How do you make it go on speaker? Those were all of the things, and it's so funny. Now, what I want you to remember, because this we didn't say earlier, is remember that when you're talking with somebody that's a different generation, mm -hmm. like this traditionalist and silent, mm -hmm. and they pick up a phone and they go, I don't know how to do this. Just remember that, because now you have a common connection and it's going to make it so much, they'll laugh, and you'll make them feel so much better. Yeah, of course. You know? Because it's, it's like the reverse situation. Exactly. Yeah. It is exactly Whenever the they, reverse situation. They upon a, a smartphone or a computer or something that they don't know how to use, mm -hmm. and it seems so basic to you. Yeah, because you grew up with it. Yeah, but then yeah. something as simple as that yep. can boggle our minds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And that's arguably simpler, so. It's supposed to be, right? <laughs> it happens to me at work, too. Sometimes I have to pick up the, the line, and it's like. The landline? Yeah, the landline. Like, hello? It's like, yeah, dial line 100. I'm like, do I have to press something to dial line 100? I don't know what to do. That's it's really interesting. Confusing. Because, see, you have to have some type of training, or you have to go to somebody next to you and go, hey, how am I supposed to use the phone? Oh, I try not to answer the phone ever. Like, when it rings, I literally immediately say, not it, and then the next <laughs> person has to to do it unless it's like an emergency in which case I do pick it up but it's it's a battle it's a constant hmm. battle with the phone <laughs> that's so interesting so the average age is 77 and households are headed by member of the silent generation spend about 41,763 in 2016 because it was all about saving money mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they aren't going to spend a lot of money like they'll keep the same furniture yep. you don't see them redecorate they'll keep that yep. same car fix the car they, they know how to repurpose things. They know how to make things with their hands. And when you watch anything on, um, on YouTube or Facebook, they have all of these, like, like it's something new, DIY, you know, do it yourself. Do it yourself. And yeah. how to, like, cook or how to sew on buttons, you know, things that are so basic to this generation that we're talking about, traditionalist slash silent. You know, that's what they grew up knowing how to do. So it's interesting. Did your did your grandparents teach you guys any anything that you know is like a basic skill to them, but to you is like I don't know how to do that. I mean, my grandma taught me how to tie my shoes, but <laughs> yeah, because you really don't need those. You have slip-ons now, right? Well, yeah, but I can tie shoes if I need to. <laughs> okay. Do you know how to tie a bow tie? I mean, a bow tie or a regular tie? Nope. Both of you guys. No, no. Oh. I still struggle. I still go to the uh, YouTube to figure it out every time I have to wear one. Yeah. Um, my grandmother, though, my great grandmother, uh, used to uh, sew a lot. She had like a really a expensive machine. sewing machine, and she's pretty good. She makes dresses and all that stuff, and she passed that on to my grandmother. And my grandmother did not pass that on to me, but she tried passing it on to my sister. Mm -hmm. So I believe my sister knows how to so. use a sewing machine. I that's very interesting. My um, my, my grandmother, mother? however, was my grandmother likes to write. Because my great grandmother like you mean letters, like, just write in general, like write okay. your thoughts, um, anything that comes to mind, stories, whatever. So ever since I was a kid, my grandmother would always 
um, suggest or just hand me a journal to like keep my thoughts. Mm-hmm. And that's something I still do to this day. So it was something that was that she kind of promotes. It's also called a diary. Yeah, yeah. sort of like a diary. Journal diary. A journal, there. mostly just like, hey, if you have like a cool story or an idea, write it down mm-hmm. with your pencil. Like with right. pen and paper, don't use a computer or your cell phone. Mm-hmm. That's something I still do to this day. I keep a journal and write on it daily. That's a good thing. And that's something that I inherited from my grandmother. I think that I still do to this day. So my great grandmother, she great grandmother, she had a sewing machine that was the pedal kind. Yeah, my yeah. grandmother has that. And one you too. had to like you got a workout doing that one. Right. And then my grandmother had that uh, that pedal sewing machine was gifted to my mother, and I remember that being in the house. And then were you taught how to use it? No, I don't know how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> she got rid of it. But my mother taught me how to use the regular sewing machine. I'm from Kansas, and in Kansas they had uh, sewing classes. So we oh. had it was uh, how to cook. We went in and learned how to cook. We learned how to sew. We learned how to do shop and how to work on cars. A lot of practical stuff. Yeah, practical things that people watch YouTube videos to do now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm one of those people who needs YouTube videos, so I'm not going to judge. Same, same. I still remember the first time my tire blew up. I didn't know how to do it. I had to learn on the spot. Oh, and we did that in driver's ed. We had to go practice changing tires. But my phone was off at the moment. So I had no phone. See, so if you improvise. have no phone, you don't yeah, know how to you do don't it. Have no, your I phone, didn't I have don't my know phone what to do. Oh, I, I changed the tire. It was not the best way to do it. When I got to where I was, my grandfather looked at it and was like, that's the worst place tire I've ever seen in my life. You're lucky that the car drove. And I'm like, well, I didn't know how Did to you do put it. all of the lug nuts on? Yeah, but... Uh, not I just, tight? I, I tied it as best as I could. It's just like, it was not well placed. It's very simple, but I went about it the wrong way. Mm. So, but then I learned how to do it correctly, and now I and now I know. Well, it says fifty-eight percent of the silent generation householders are women, eighty-four percent own a vehicle, and they spend slightly more on cell phones than landline, and they are the biggest spenders on reading material, which makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's all about paper, tactile. But it's interesting they spend more on slightly more on cell phones than landline. Mm-hmm. Because even to them, they're transferring. Well, d- why do you think that they would spend on cell phones? You got to well, think about. Well, in case they it. had an emergency somewhere, or they keep the landline in case there is an emergency. That's what is familiar to them, and certainly if the power goes out, mm-hmm. and we have no ability to use our cell phones, it's helpful to have a landline. But why do you think they would get cell phones? You need to think about the generations that are in the rest of the family. Yeah. Well, I feel like, like to keep in touch with them. Yeah, to keep yeah, in touch. Yeah, with their children, with their ga- grandchildren. Yeah, my grandma wants to see all the photos You're kids not on using Facebook. landlines, are you? Yeah, <laughs> you no. didn't yeah. know. So if they want to keep in touch with you, then they've got to make sure they know how to use it. Yeah. So maybe you hadn't thought about that. Not really. My, gra- my grandmother um, learned how to use her cell phone a couple mm-hmm. years ago, like her first ever cell phone. Yeah, mine too. I taught her how to use it and... She gets it now. She goes on Facebook all the time. I mm-hmm. mean, so it's a new toy. Yeah, it's a new yeah. toy for her to play with. My great that. grandmother though refuses to uh, get a cell phone. She still has a. I've never met my great learned. grandparents on any side. Really? Yep. Hmm. Okay. Well, facts about traditionalists. <laughs> Let's take. We, we've got to make sure that we've got four other generations yeah, four to generations. go through, right. and we need to talk about these facts about the traditionalists, which is also silent one. Okay. So go ahead. You guys lead. All right. Here are some fun facts about traditionalists. They prefer to communicate either in person or via print. They do not question decisions made by leaders. Considered insubordination. Do not expect a lot of feedback and do not give it. No news is good news. Um, Use storytelling to transfer knowledge. Prefer to stay with the same employer from hire to retire. Loyalty is rewarded with better jobs and pay. And they feel top-down management builds large, successful organizations. So you have to remember historically what's going on Mm -hmm. in that time frame. That was the boom of a lot of um, manufacturing Mm -hmm. technologies that were going on. 
and it was about really big businesses, right? And it was the turn of the war and when everybody was also producing things, manufacturing. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it makes sense when you know what's going on in that time frame. Right. The storytelling and how to transfer language, I think that is significant. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things, and I, I've shared this before, but how adults learn best is through storytelling. And honestly, I think it's anybody because that's why we read stories to children, right? And they get yeah. hooked on stories, which translate into movies, books, magazines, whatever it is, you know, method of delivery. But I, I think that that's significant. And I don't, I know my grandparents would tell us my sibling stories. Um, they would tell us things about our parents, but my parents didn't go and tell stories to us. Really? So, yeah, it's a different transfer of information. Yeah. Do your parents tell you guys stories? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I My grandmother mostly. My mom, not too much. Yeah. But my grandmother would tell me and my sister a bunch of stories from her childhood, and they always ended in a life lens lesson, so that's why you never do this, or that's why you never do that. Mm, my dad likes to tell stories of his childhood while my grandma is present, because he's like, you used to make bone stew. Yeah, my, my grandmother does that too. These foods that were terrible, and you made us eat them, and they laugh about it. Oh, uh, they'd make soup out of bones, like yeah, what? like so it makes mm -hmm. stock. Yeah, yeah, and then they would throw stuff in it, mm -hmm. vegetables yeah. and meat or something of that sort. Yeah, and apparently it wasn't very good to him. And maybe there was no seasoning. It might it, have it, needed some it's, salt. It's funny because my grandmother has been a vegetarian since she was a little kid. And my great grandmother like raised her own chickens and all that stuff. Oh, she killed so her own chickens then too. Yeah, I assume, right? she would like cook that type of stuff. And she had eight kids, including my grandmother. So she had eight children to feed, but she also had the dilemma of pleasing my grandmother, who has always been a vegetarian since she was a little girl. And I just, whenever she tells me stories like that, when my great grandmother is present, it's just fun to see that interaction. Mm -hmm. My great grandmother, you made it so hard. Why didn't you just eat the chicken? It's, <laughs> it's funny. All right, so we're moving over to baby boomers. So, Matt, why don't All right. you... So, baby boomers were born between 1946 and 1964 and grew up as the most optimistic generation in American history. They believe in the American dream, have high expectations, and live through the greatest economic boom in history. Now you're changing it. Including no, the invention of the television. The boomer generation has the, great, has the greater amount of disposable income than all the other generations, mm -hmm. but it is their purchasing patterns that set them apart from most of the younger generations. According to a study conducted by Visa, by 2020, there will be 11 million more consumers over the age of 60, while the share of spending among younger consumers is expected to decline over the next 10 years. So what's uh -huh. really interesting about that is now you guys are in film studies. Mm -hmm. Did you know when the TV was uh, brought into, you know, the mainstream homes? Um, but, well, they around they became cheap enough in yeah. the '60s and to be mainstream. Yeah, the, '50s is when they and it was were black trickling and white. in, and it was yeah. expected to fail. People like when they invented the television, there were studies and people saying and predicting that it was going to fail because they they assumed that people will not have time in their day mm -hmm. to sit down and look into a box and they which is why radio was so popular back in the day but they'd sit and they'd look into a box to listen to to stories right but, but yeah that, but then they became so popular yes. when movies were on the decline until mm -hmm. the 70s mm -hmm. yep so well, i think that's that that's really really interesting um okay so in that generation since TV was just coming around, that was also when uh, Woodstock was going on, some other things that were um, happening. It was about you know women's movements and people being able to get rights, that women getting rights. They're, this isn't in here, just so you know. It's probably yeah. not in here. Um, but this is part of what I was presenting uh, last week on Saturday. But how they wanted to be communicated with is, is still different from the previous generation. So what is it? It says it says that they le wanted to be communicating with in person. So that's still there. Yeah. That's something that we see is continuing from one generation to the next. And then by phone. And the phones that we had were still the same landlines that right. we had here. 
I will tell you that reading newspapers was still very common at that time. Um, food delivery, groceries, this is so funny to me because groceries were delivered to your door. Yeah, there were milkmen. And but such. there was also like frozen goods. You could sign mm -hmm. up for a plan and people would come and deliver um, you know, vegetables and meat and you'd have it in a big freezer. But groceries, there was a milkman, sure, but there was also the ability to have it delivered to your door. Doctors would come to your house, you know, things like that. And it's so funny to me because now it's circling around where, you know, however many 40 years later, we're seeing that same type of service because you can pick up and order Uber Eats and it mm -hmm. will deliver to you. Yep. you. Publix, you can get groceries delivered to you, yep. Prime, yeah. Walmart, you can drive up and pick it up or you can have it sent to your home. And it's come back full circle. Yeah, just through a different medium. It's about con convenience, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what was important at that time, too. So it was, uh, it's interesting to me about that. And also the ability, that the reason why I think that there's so much money, disposable income, is because they've also begun retiring people were still saving because that was still at the end of the war <laughs> when saving was really, really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Vietnam War, people saved. But it's something that I haven't seen going on because um, after this, these boomers, um, because everybody's going to college and people are spending more, they're going into debt, they're also going into credit card debt, and we're going to see that as it continues to, to yeah. come through. Because that's true of my parents, because they're, they're both baby boomers. My dad barely, but they're both baby boomers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they S definitely ha had that saving money imprinted on them from their yeah. previous yeah. generation. Yeah, and that's a good thing, because honestly, if you're talking about like what you should save, um, you should live by a 70-30 seven, rule, or if you're you know, talking about your, that's for business, but a 60-40 rule, and you use 40% of your income is split into these types of categories. So if I had $1,000, or if I was paying you $1,000, right, you would take 10%, and that would be emergency money. Well, actually, if you're a spiritual person, 10% would be your tithe. So right off the bat, $100 goes straight into your church. The next 10% is emergency money. So you take that and you, it's real cash, you put it away in case something happens, like the uh, hurricane comes through and you're not able to go and buy, you know, you can't use your phone, you can't use credit cards, everything's down, but you can still use cash. The next, so that's 20%, right? So the next 20%, we're going to go and take that and we're going to split it into another 10%. 10% is for short-term purchases. Anything that is uh, something you want to go and do. It could be going out to have dinner. It could be anything that you're wanting to um, save for, save for a trip. Um, that's short-term, short-term money. But then the other 10% is for long-term. So you'd say, say $100 for tithing, $100 for emergency cash. You hide it, you don't touch it for anything. Another $100 is over there for short-term savings, and then the other $100 is for long-term, like buying a car or a home, something mm -hmm. big, or a big vacation that you want to take. Right. Now that 60% is what you're supposed to live on. So you don't live on 1000 you don't live on that at all, and that's not where your credit cards are coming into play because yeah. credit cards are being paid out of short-term savings. Mm -hmm. So it's a different way of thinking about how you have to operate, and honestly, your housing out of that 60% is supposed to be about 30% of your budget. So wow. if you're not living on 30% of the 60%, you have to run the math, then you'll see, oh, this is what my rent is supposed to be. It's not going to be... $600, which is may, maybe what you think you'd have to spend, you need to have 30% of the $600, which is, what, $250? Could you imagine living on something like that, $200, $300? Because, like, 50% of $600 is $300. So mm -hmm. you'd have to dial it way back, and it's probably, like, $150, $200. Maybe two fifty. I feel like it'd be possible, but it'd be very difficult. Yeah. You'd have a roommate, for yeah. sure. You yeah. might have you three roommates. <laughs> yeah. 
to be able to afford that. So that's yeah, really where that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> yep. So that's what that 60% covers your rent, your utilities, your phone, your car, your car insurance, your gas. It has yeah, to your food. It's not enough. Yeah. But, but that's the in that time frame, baby boomers and silent. That's what they lived on. Yep. They didn't spend like people do now. Yep. Okay. It's definitely changed. So what are those uh, facts about baby boomers, Abby? All right. The baby boomers prefer to communicate in person or via phone. They don't generally disagree with leaders, but instead create committees and, sur and surveys to gain information, summarize the data, and present it to leaders. They believe in formal feedback with fair and consistent processes, prefer knowledge transfer by storytelling, change job earlier in career for promotions and focus on stability later, and they believe things are done a certain way and consider it policy. Mm. So there's a shift in how people are thinking mm -hmm. because of the things that are, things that are going on again in that generation. Um, there's all of this focuses on the Vietnam War. There's people going to um, peace, love, you know, free love. All of these things where they're they're actually questioning the government and things that are going on. Yeah. And that was around the time they discovered that youth spending was a big market, yeah. and they started catering to the youth mm -hmm. to spend. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's really significant. So again, now remember the topic is about how to communicate across these generations. Mm -hmm. And if you're really, really as a millennial or a Gen Z and you're thinking, okay, I work with other people that are older than myself and I mm -hmm. need to not always expect that they're going to communicate with me on my phone and whatever your preferred method is, mm -hmm. whether it's texting or, you know, emails or, you know, that's, that's archaic now too. But nonetheless, you know, how do people want to be communicated with? That's a very, if you're trying to differentiate yourself as a leader and show leadership, you should ask that question. Mm -hmm. you should how do you want to be, you ask the person, how would you like to be How would you like me to communicate with you? Okay. Yeah. Because now somebody's sitting here going, wait, they, they haven't actually had people ask them that question that's younger. And it, it, it is a really good way to make you stand out. And also... On the same hand, anybody that is in these generations, Gen X, we're going to say Gen X or really baby boomers and, and silent, you know, they need to ask that same question. Mm -hmm. It's not just one way. It, but if we both, if we all do that, then we're really able to see that we can have improved communications. It creates more of a team dynamic in that workplace. Right. You should probably go and ask your, your family members how they want to be communicated with. Yeah. So we're going over into uh, Gen X now. Gen Xers were born between 1965 and 1980, and they are considered realists. Gen Xers saw the rise of technology and change and lived through multiple recessions, global competition, and the Vietnam War, which is still, it's prior to 65 also. These events created a generation of individuals skeptical of organizations, politics, and the news. They focus on life outside of work, making work-life balance of utmost importance. So, Abby, what does it say about marketers? Right. Marketers have a leniency to dumb Gen X with baby boomers. Wait, what's the word? Oh, clump. clump. There you go. <laughs> clump, sorry. May I just move this? There, that's better. Uh, sorry about that. Failing to differentiate the two in marketing campaigns. But who were the two generations? Because they Generation think X and Baby Boomers. There you go. Yep. Yes. Uh, but the spending power of Gen X can go ignored. Gen Xers make up 25% of the population, yet produce 31% of the total U.S. income. These are decision makers. So that's really kind of significant, too, because nobody likes to be... Um, put together with another generation when it's really not significant and like how they communicate or what was going on in their life. We have to think about what is the technology that was coming out around Gen Xers. And so we know that it was up to 1980. You guys know this. What was coming out in 1980? We had computers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So now it's not like people were typing. There's keyboarding going on. We have all kinds of um, other communication, cell phones, but they didn't look like this. You guys have seen yeah, those yeah, old really movies where they're, yeah. yeah, like the size yeah. of a shoe. 
<laughs> but nonetheless, that's the technology. Yeah. So people communicate very, very differently at that time. So that's kind of significant also. So Matt, what are the facts about Gen Xers? Well, they tend to communicate via email, which makes sense, and check their sources via the internet. Mm-hmm. They believe in, in they believe the person with the best skills and most experience should make decisions. Think real time feedback is critical to getting work done efficiently. They document learnings and post them to the internet so others can find it. They get ahead in their careers by leaving companies and coming back later for promotions. And they feel rules were made to be broken and it is easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. So you see that they're leaving one place and they go out and they get some experience and then they're able to bring it back, but yet their grandparents or their parents were in a generation where it was, no, you stayed in that job from whenever you got it mm -hmm. to the end. And they're, you know, you don't always have in some of these companies some upward mobility opportunities, right? So you're stuck. Yeah. But, well, I don't know if you could say you're stuck. It was a choice. They chose to stay yeah. in it. So I, I don't know if I would say they were stuck. Oh, but if they had that belief ingrained in them. Yes, yeah. Because it's about loyalty, remember? Mm -hmm. and, and you have to think about that was also, the, this is right around the time frame, well, actually in baby boomers, is when divorce started getting more, more prevalent. People were going, well, wait a minute, I don't have to stay with you forever. Mm -hmm. you know. And divorce, we saw it starting to rise with mm -hmm. families, and we still see it rising <coughs> with the Gen Xers. Because people are going, oh, I think I'll hop from place to place to place, whether it was a job, right? people that were in your life, significant others. And so it's something that we need to be aware of when we're talking with all of these people because it helps us to understand why they think the way they do based on the historical events that are going on, based on how they're communicating with each other, based on the technology that they're using. Mm -hmm. That's really significant. And when you understand that from a, like a global perspective or a holistic pr perspective, we'll say, that you can almost uh, see, okay, if I want to lead, and it's very, it's very much moving into this place where um, millennials will be managing Gen Xers, they'll be managing you know, baby boomers, <clears throat> because they might be the, the head of the company. Or they might be coming in and they're their manager. So you have to think about that. If you were coming in here and you were managing me, you know, I have all of these years of experience. <coughs> what is it? How do you want to tap into that? And mm -hmm. you need to be thinking strategically as a young leader how you can do that. So if you take the time to sit down and go, what was going on in these different generations, then it gives you an opportunity to be able to hear some really great stories. Um, and realize that there's always a consistent thread in business in many areas that you might not have thought about. Something that was uh, also interesting about um, Gen Xers is that they, they didn't want people to tell them what to do. They wanted to be able to do it themselves. Figure it yeah. out. Yeah. yeah. So the facts about the Gen Xers, whose turn is that? Didn't we just read that? Oh, we yeah, didn't we do did it. read that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wait. No. But did we? Oh no. We we, we covered the, we all read of that. Them all. Yeah. Yeah. We went through. Uh, yeah. We sure did. Okay. So it's class. time for uh, a patron, patron announcement. Oh, and there's your grandmother. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Hi there, grandmother. Hi. Hey, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So our second patron for the night is Simplicity Solutions Group. Simplicity Solutions Group specializes in web design development, hybrid mobile app. Sorry, uh, hybrid mobile and custom web apps built on proprietary application framework. They help businesses thrive in the digital age from web design to record management software. Their website is simplicitysolutionsgroup.com. Thank you, Simplicity Solutions Group, for being a patron of the Intern Whisper Live. Actually, if you say nothing, nobody knows anything. Oh, <laughs> yep. There's just a that pause. makes sense. <laughs> yeah, when you say something, you bring attention to it. So usually how it works, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so say nothing. You know, it's okay to have a pause. Yes. Yeah. So we're gonna go over and move to Gen Y, also known as millennials. 
They're okay. So we have each one of you sitting across the table. One is a Gen Z. One is a millennial. Yep. So should well, I read it since I'm the millennial? Uh, I was going <laughs> to let our our listening audience guess, but yes, I think you should read it. Okay, sorry. Take it away. Millennials were born between 1981 and 1996. I'll let you guess which year I was born. And lived through terrorist attacks such as 9-11 attacks, multiple school shootings and scandals, as well as the Great Recession. They are the first generation to grow up in the world of technology instead of learning at a later age. Millennials want to make a difference in their workplace and are willing to change jobs to fulfill that desire. Did you know millennials are now the largest group in the workforce? Spending $600 billion a year, millennials' desires and needs are reinventing the commerce landscape. So some other interesting tidbits that came out when I was um, preparing for this presentation is that this generation also, um, based on what I read, I have not found that to be true, though, in my own experience, is they don't want anybody telling them what to do also. And I think that's kind <coughs> of interesting because it's, it's not been the experience I've had with anybody that's a millennial. They're open to feedback. <clears throat> they're able to um, to contribute. You know, they they want others to participate in the process. They do seem to want to have. I can't say a mentor, but they definitely want to have feedback from others. So I yeah. I didn't find that necessarily true. But wanting to make a difference is huge for them because it's all about finding purpose, being able to take your skills that you have and being able to bring them. Um, into the world and make it a better place than where they feel their parents and their grandparents had have created. So anything that's an environmental cause or helping to um, end um, some type of problems like, you know, energy and water, you know, how do we make sure that we're going to have clean water? How do we um, help create more jobs? These are important causes for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I found that to be really interesting. What out of here, Matt, do you think is really something that is true or something that you think is not true? And, and um, when you've been labeled, because people always get labeled. Yeah. Well, I definitely remember growing up in the world of technology, like in elementary school, we, you had computer classes alongside music and math and reading where there was a section on how to use a PC. Mm-hmm. And how mm -hmm. to use Word and PowerPoint. <coughs> mm -hmm. And they taught us that at eight years old. Very interesting. Yeah, so, and I remember we had to have floppy disks <laughs> to keep floppy with us. Floppy disks, okay. Yeah. But nobody had phones in the school, right? No. No one had phones in the school. Mm -hmm. Not at that time, you know, in elementary school. Kids mm -hmm. didn't have phones. No, I, I wouldn't think so. What were the um, the classes that you think that you saw the most um, type of transition in? Because remember, I said I'm from Kansas, and I mm -hmm. had classes where I learned how to change a tire, you know, on a car. I learned how to cook. I learned how to sew. Any of those types of classes, wood shop. Um, there's this big resurgence in um, shows on TV like um, The Kids Are Okay or The Kids Are All Right. I think that's what it's called. And then um, the Goldbergs, where it's looking at the 60s, the 70s, the 80s. It's very nostalgic. Yeah. What seems to stand out to you as a very um, kind of a sweet memory based on technology? Is it floppy? Floppy? So <laughs> I, I don't know if floppy disk is a sweet memory or dial up or any of that at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but surely you had phones then that were still the kind that you dialed, right? Well, yeah. Um, and I, my first phone was a flip phone. Oh, okay. Like a little Verizon flip phone. And uh -huh. How old were you? I was in mi middle school when I got a phone. You got your first phone. Yeah, and I didn't have a smartphone until high school. I think you were probably one of the few that actually had that, right? No. It was I, was, I was among the last to get a smartphone. Oh. Same here. People it would be like, oh, I want to text you. And I'd be like, it cost me 25 cents to text you back, <laughs> and I have to do it on, like, nine keys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh, my goodness. So, um, Abby, what are the facts about millennials? All right. Millennials like to communicate via text and for forms of social media. However, the majority prefer to communicate in person while at work. They make decisions in teams without any one person being in charge. 
They grew up with constant feedback and prefer real-time feedback to adjust quickly. They prefer video as a form of knowledge transfer and will leave a company for more pay, more meaningful work, and career advancement. And they also think of policies as just guidelines. Mm. So I was talking um, with a uh, woman. Her name is Dr. Mary Jo Ross. And she is, um, I think she's the head of the board for the Church Street District. And Mm -hmm. out of this conversation, we were talking about millennials. And she said that she was uh, having a conversation with a, a young man that she had taught, but she was coaching also. And she said, hey, there's this job that's open, you know, down, you know, wherever. We'll say the convention center. And it's 250000 He's making eighty. He said, "Yeah, but I'd have to, I'd have to give up my my schedule, and I really <coughs> don't want to do that." She couldn't wrap her head around that. <laughs> She's going. It was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and he had a master's. Um, he could go right into that, and he had work experience, but he didn't want to give it up for the money. And I said, "Yeah, but that's consistent. It's not all about money for them." It's mm-hmm. about that balance of what they want for their life. So yeah. you really have to make sure that you're you're thinking about that when you're talking with him. And she goes, you know, I hadn't thought about that. So that it was, it's an interesting conversation. Mm-hmm. Have you guys noticed that this is also a generation that's more inclined to stay living in the home with any of your friends or anything? Because well, I've, yeah, myself included. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've it, it increases as time goes on, and it's going, and it seems to be a trend that will continue to grow. I think so too. So, do you know this show, The Waltons? I've heard of it. I've heard of it. Okay, go look it up. So, this is really where a family, and I, I want to say it was probably in the '40s, maybe the '30s. This family, and it's a true story based on a family that all lived together in in one roof. So it was the grandparents, the parents, and the kids. And when the kids got married, some of even those families, you know, they might come and live in that the whole household. But there were eight kids in this family. And at the end of the show, it's good night, good night, good night. And they're saying good night, Mary Jo, good night, you know, John Boy, good night, blah, 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 blah. All of this um, story. But I've seen that now it's it appears that it's okay, it's acceptable to be able to continue your living at home, uh, you're saving, you're getting ready to move out. And mm-hmm. it's it's not this big push from like baby boomers and Gen Xers like, I want out of the house, <laughs> yeah. you know, where it was a big push. For me, it was. I, I could not wait until I uh, was going off to college. It was just so exciting to me because yeah. then I wasn't going to have my parents telling me what to do anymore. <laughs> I, I do want that financial cushion before I mm-hmm. go off. Mm-hmm. And have that. I've what? noticed that seems to be a trend. And you know, they seem to be okay with having a roommate also. Versus yeah. you know, other generations that said, no, I want to have a place of my own. So it seems different. Well, well I would say that isn't lost on millennials. It's just... The rush isn't there, mm. but they still do want a place of their own and all those such things. How old were you guys when you got your driver's license? I've also seen that there's a delay to go and get the driver's license. There was a delay. It was I like was 18, 20. I'm going, really? You have no driver's license? How do you? It was like 18, 19. Really? Wow. How about you? I was 17 or 16, one of those. Well, 16 is the typical age. I think I got it a year later because I, we didn't have a car Mm. Like, my mom didn't have a car, and we just traversed using the bus, so um, there was really no rush until we got a car, and I was like, all right, I'm getting my driver's license. Once you have a car, you don't ever want to be without the car. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but then when you have it for too long, you dread having to drive everywhere, which is what Mm. happened to me. Yes and no. (laughs) Okay, so we got to get ready to wrap up here. We're looking at Generation Z. (coughs) So, um, Abby, you read this one. All right. Because this is Abby's group. Okay, this is my group. I'm a I'm a Gen Zer. I've never felt so Gen old. Z-er. You can right. just say Gen Zs. All right. So to. Gen Zs are born after 1997, are not, and are the newest generation in the workforce. They are known as digital natives and do not know a world without the internet. Gen Zs are very entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial seeing yeah. companies like Uber and 
is that oh Airbnb, Airbnb thrive by using an individual's own time and resources to make money. While their pockets are small, their influence is mighty. A generation whose economic output hardly exists has captivated the attention of marketers and brands because of what makes them so unique. They have never known a world without the internet. And Gen Z's parents are paying for their desires. 93% of parents say their children influence family spending and household purchases. So, do you think that's true? Well, my case is very particular, I would say. I can I definitely know a lot of people with these situations. I It doesn't do not have to be about just yeah, yourself. I'm exactly. just saying as a whole. Um, but yeah, as a whole, this is pretty pretty accurate. So, definitely we totally get the fact that you've grown up with the phone is basically in your hand from birth almost. It's sort like, of, yeah, yeah. You know, families now parents will go and say here they'll give the phone to the baby mm -hmm. and yeah. the baby's sitting here going ah, playing with all kinds of buttons could be calling everybody yeah, yeah. And you see kids playing on ipads all the time i know and like there was one year where ipads were the most requested gift among yep. children and they don't know they don't necessarily have to know how to read because if they can find the microphone and i'm not really talking about just babies but like once a child is able to uh, speak I've seen like two year olds and three year olds come over here and go, Oh, there's the microphone and they start calling. They'll start calling their, their parent and go, Call mom, call dad and they don't know how to dial, but they know <laughs> that they'll see that picture of their parent because I have friends that, you know, their kids do that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, Wow, that's amazing. You know? That is really crazy. Yeah, my little brother is just like how that old sometimes. is he? He's gonna turn five in a couple days. Okay, so. yeah. Yeah, he I'd totally. say I'd say these facts are like stronger as you go further into generation yeah. Z. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I grew up. People started getting cell phones when I was in middle school. Mm-hmm. Like fourth grade, third grade. But and, I, and I can see some similarities to yeah, Gen exactly. Z and. Yeah, where it crosses but, over. But yeah. I, I look back at people that are way younger than me, ten years younger, twelve years younger. And I see little kids that are in first, second grade, and they have their iPhones already. Yeah, that's... Mm -hmm. And it's just crazy to me. They know how to use it so well. Oh, so, yeah. So, yeah. Like, I agree with Matt where most of these, I think, are more abundant in younger Gen Zers. But what they don't know how to do are the things that their great-grandparents, yes. their grandparents grew up knowing how to do. Changing tires, mm -hmm. how to cook, how to sew buttons on things mm -hmm. that's right. what they don't know how to because do because everything is so convenient now and then they, they really look it up on their phone anything. and go how do yeah. i do this they don't really need to do most of anything in terms of those things you know you can call somebody or ask somebody to yeah. help you out. i don't know to me it's i i feel like we need to find this balance between mm -hmm. the world of technology and keeping the human connection in place yeah and know when to put the technology down i don't think we'll ever lose the human connection but I do agree we need to find a better balance. With well, technology, at least. I think that's why people are you know, putting their phones down. I've seen that uh, more happening. But I, I also have seen, and, and I think that there's become a great awareness about the need to keep humanity in the relationship because um, people are talking about the robots and then artificial intelligence and everything that we can create. If we see it in a movie, we know we can create it. We already know that, but it's always how do we make sure that we differentiate ourselves from what the automation can can happen? Yeah. So it's always going to be through our own creativity, through the ability to be um, able to have real relationships. Because didn't we talk about that one video where the guy was calling? I I don't know if we did it on a show, but yeah, it was with Google, and he called to show how amazing the AI was um, he called a, a place to get his hair cut uh -huh. and he went through oh no Friday isn't going to work and it was a total computer generated, sh generated Ooh, conversation wow. he said no Friday isn't going to work I need a different day well what day do you need and so the computer kept responding it was very very intuitive and it never became impatient or short with <laughs> the um, person <laughs> So it was constant customer service. It was perfect. That is crazy. And it, it but, really responded. But I think humanity has a history of adapting to automation, too. I would agree, yeah. Because, like, a lot of factories 
jobs have had to be replaced with automation, but mm -hmm. it also increases with productivity. But then that there are a lot of new opportunities with the new technology. Mm -hmm. So it's about adapting. So are facts about Gen Zers, you, they use Snapchat, do you? Yes, I do. And Snapchat mm -hmm. and Instagram are As their very main popular. Forms of social media. They watch videos and live chats for communication transfer. Yep. They're considered to be the always on generation because of the technology and they want to make the world a better place and have a global mindset. I think that's the biggest gift there is. Yeah. So we're moving on down, we're transitioning and we're gonna be doing our final wrap up. So tonight right. it's gonna be you, but we have transition music. So you have to wait a minute. Yes, we do. All right, we want to thank Valencia College East Campus for their state-of-the-art broadcasting studio, the great atmosphere, their knowledgeable staff. Thank you, Q. Always got to give a shout-out to Q. <laughs> they have a fantastic environment to produce in and easy equipment that's easy equipment to learn to use. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. You can paraphrase. It's totally good. <laughs> So we're going to be wrapping up our yep. show. So, so let's do our shout outs. Um, I don't have anyone particular, so mom and dad again. I think you should be saying thank you, mom and dad, before, because you got that awesome computer. I d that's true. That is I mean, an awesome I th computer. I thank them in person, but I can thank them here too. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, nonetheless, that becomes a public record, and so they know it's going out on five podcast channels. That's true. Yeah. Thank you, mom and dad. There you go. <laughs> okay. Abby, um, you're up. Just a quick shout out to my friends and families, to my grandmother who always tunes in, to you guys, to everybody else that tuned in or will tune in later, mm -hmm. and to my little brother whose birthday's coming up. He's going to be five on April 2nd. What's his so, name? First name um, only? Abrian. What? Abrian. Or Abrian. Okay. Yeah, that's I'll practice. That's Abrian. Abrian. Like Adrian, Abrian. but with a B. Abrian. Abrian. I'm going to practice. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like my tongue is just like totally all over the place in my <laughs> mouth when I'm trying to say it. All right. So my shout out goes to um, my software team. That's a big shout out to Joe, to Dennis, to John. They're making it all happen here. Um, to the game team. Yay. Aaron's coming back on board. And so is Sophie next month. They've been on leave. Um, to all of the people over there on the game team. To Katrina, who always puts all of this great content out for us, and to all of the other interns that are working with either clients or in different capacities, and then for you two guys. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So. Go ahead. As we close the show, we want to thank you for something? listening. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> and yeah. we're off. Oh, we're off. Okay. Say that loud.